Hey everybody, welcome back. David Eon here with another virtual video catalog tour. Been a while since I've been able to do one of these. I've done several of them in the past. If you're new to this, you may be interested in going back and taking a look through our archive. There's actually a playlist for this about Toy Fair catalogs, and that's what this is, the 1977 Knickerbocker Toy Fair catalog. And it's really interesting going through these old catalogs. Sometimes you find toy properties that no longer exist. You find toys that were in prototype mode, set up for production that never got done. There are no prices in these, but sometimes they do have the price sheet, which is what this is. This is the original price sheet from Knickerbocker for this toy catalog. And it comes with a disclaimer up here. It says minimum opening order 1250, minimum reorder 400. Knickerbocker Toys. So everything in the catalog is on this sheet so that you could check it off. But what we want to see are the toys. So we'll go ahead and I believe this is a 40 page catalog which is actually kind of small in comparison to some of the other Toy Fair catalogs that I've done video tours of. And here we start with a property that's been around for a long time and still is. Disney of course. Disney and size ranges on these it looks like it's going to be from 11 to 18 inches. 18 being the largest one. 18 inch Pluto as a matter of fact. And I do like it when they're able to show you some of the packaging design. Like you see the boxes here, that's how it should be packaged. Rarely you see packaging shown in any of these catalogs. So I like that. Basic plush. Is that supposed to be Dumbo? Yeah, that is supposed to be Dumbo, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very slim chance of a resemblance. I love the flat-faced Mickey, too. It's like his face is just crushed. <laughs> Knickerbocker usually makes pretty good quality stuff too, but these don't look very great. They look kind of cheap. Disney talking dolls. Mickey and Minnie rag dolls each come in a talking model. Four sayings, all its own. Oh, so it says four things. Twelve and a half inch. Most likely it's going to be a pull string talker. And then you have Dumbo and Bambi over here, 14 and 18 inch Dumbo and then an 11 and a half and 15 inch, 15 and a half inch that is, Bambi. They do not talk. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that Bambi before outside of this catalog. The Rescue Rangers and then some denim plush characters. So denim outfits ranging from 14 to 18 inches and then the rescue rangers or rescuers assortment it says Bianca and Bernard 8 inches and 4 inches and 15 inches several sizes but they don't show them all to you. Mickey's Tub Club. Now that looks cool. Looks like a kind of a riverboat with a slide and some rubberized figures. Do they swim? A sliding pond, a water raft, a water wheel, a floating chase lounge, swimming tube, outboard motor, sponge soap dish, and figures of Mickey and Donald. So are they just articulated? Four points of articulation? See, that's neat. Do they even make tub toys anymore? Do kids take baths? Or do they just like rush through a shower nowadays? Mickey Mouse Club Tote and Doll. So it's a it's a carrying tote with a little Mickey Mouse in the pocket. And then club 
puzzle blocks. And then Mickey Mouse Club Mickey Mobile, which is a soft plush vehicle with plastic wheels and a ragdoll figure inside. And they did something similar for Sesame Street because LPH has a bunch of those. Baby Holly Hobby. Now, there is a dead franchise. Holly Hobby does not exist anymore in any incarnations that I can think of or that I'm aware of. I don't even think Hallmark does it anymore. 16 inch window boxed Baby Holly. couple of rag dolls and this is something that Knickerbocker is really famous for. Rag dolls in various sizes from nine and a half inches all the way up to 34 inches in display boxes. Wow 34 inches. And you see the sizing here actually before I turn the page how that would look. 34 inch Holly Hobby dolls. There's Amy and Robbie Hobby. And here we can see what they mean by display box. Again, I like it when they actually show the packaging in these. Give you an idea. and then miniature rag dolls and then there is how that came boxed. I'm pretty sure you can still find Holly Hobby if you were interested in it you could go on eBay and you could find this stuff really really cheap because again it's a dead franchise. Now here's one I bet you didn't know about Holly Hobby action figures We'll just start on this page. Doll and playset assortments. And then they have dressmates, which dressmates are clothing accessories. So there's three basic figures there. And then this is how that came packaged. And we actually saw a carded figure at the Joe Fest that we recently attended. And it's probably the first time I've seen a carded one of these at the show. They're pretty rare but they don't sell for a whole heck of a lot. And then here's some clothing assortments and they came basically on the same card but no figure this time. I think that's interesting. And they have a preschool playset. And they did something similar to this with Raggedy Ann and Andy as well. A gazebo garden house. And then here's three more examples of packaged outfits. And these come with accessories. It says dress and play set assortments. And then a playhouse, Holly Hobby dollhouse for those figures. Which is nice, she's got a brass bed. That was a big thing in the 70s and 80s, brass beds. And then a look at the inside of the house here. That's neat as long as it's not too expensive. And then tote and doll assortments for Holly Hobby, as well as purse and scarf sets. Did anybody have these? I don't remember ever seeing this stuff. Nice display box though. I don't remember ever seeing anybody with this kind of thing when I was growing up.
Betsy Clark. There's another dead franchise. Another one you'll never see. And it looks like the same kind of a setup. I bet it came carded exactly the same way. It may have. Betsy Clark doll and playset assortments. It's got a little baby in a bathtub. <laughs> the little tub's cute, and the bar of soap and the little rubber ducky are a nice touch there. And then, time for bed. And then Betsy Clark dolls over here. 10 and 15 inch assortment. And another bag and doll, or tote and doll, I should say. That must have been a big thing for Knickerbocker. Now we get into one of the more famous properties for Knickerbocker, of course, Raggedy Ann and Andy, another dead franchise. Last I saw of Raggedy Ann and Andy after Knickerbocker went under, Hasbro had it, and then it went to applause, and then after applause, I just never heard from it again. And look at the sizes on these. Hold on. Hold on to your hat. Size assortments from 15 and a half inches to six foot. Six feet? How much was that? How much was that? I am curious. Let me pull out the price chart and see if I can even find it. Holly Harvey, Raggy, Raggedy Ann and Andy. Oh man, is it here? Here it is, six foot. Right up here. I'm pointing at the wrong thing. Here we go. Six foot assortment, Raggedy Ann B, packaged as one. Thirty pounds, sixteen sixty seven cube, price each one hundred dollars. Hundred bucks. And that's their price. That's the uh, retailer purchasing price. I wonder what these would have sold for at that size. I wonder if any of those are still hanging around. I'm going to go to eBay and even just look and see if they have any six foot Raggedy Ann and Andy dolls left. Although it just says Raggedy Ann. Andy looks like he only goes to 45 inches there. 45 inches is where he caps out. Now, there's the camel with the wrinkled knees. 17 inches. I actually had one of these once, believe it or not. Camel with the wrinkled knees. And then the Raggedy Ann and Andy Preschool. They call it a preschool. I don't see how that's possible. I think it's just a, more like a playhouse because you see they have actual functional beds with little pillows and everything. And my wife actually has this set. She has this set. It's really interesting. It's solid plastic and it actually has this like yarn fringe around the house. It's pretty neat. It's a nice little set. She's a fan of Rag Raggedy Ann and Andy. Miniatures, the miniature doll assortment and their packaging. And then over here are the carded action figures, and my wife has these as well. Most people don't even know something like this even existed. There's Raggedy Andy with his fish. And then Raggedy Ann has a lemonade stand and a little cat. And they are like jointed action figures, all in vinyl. Sunbonnet Babies is another dead franchise, guys. We're just racking them up. The only one we've seen so far that's still in existence is the core Disney characters. Love Buds. Look at those bows. It's essentially the same dolls. Love Buds. Sugar and Spice. 
Now this looks to me more familiar. I know I've seen these before. And then Junior Sugar and Spice, which a couple of them look pretty sleepy. And by the way, that's a case assortment marker. If you're wondering why it says like four Missy, four Lindy, four Silky, it would come in a case of 12, four of each is what that means to the dealer who would be going through this catalog. Animal characters, and these are some known franchises. Here we go. Scooby-Doo still around. I'm not so sure about Curious George though. I know that there's been some animated comebacks. Tom and Jerry and Casper. Well, that's a really crappy looking Casper, I gotta say. And they come in what, 14 and 19 inches? There's a variety of sizes. And I can show you here if you wanted to see that. Just get an idea of some of the sizes that were available. Because hey, you may look at this catalog and see something and say, I remember that and want to go look for it. And you may want to know what sizes they came in. The Mattel Casper is much better, and it's a pull string talker. Clifford, the big red dog, didn't know they were doing these in the 70s. I only remember the cartoon where Clifford's voice was being done by Mark Hamill. Flipper. And then the Berenstain Bears. Please note the spelling. Please note the spelling. <laughs> Those hardly look like the Berenstain Bears. <laughs> That's, uh, that's taking some liberties with the Berenstain Bears there. LPH loves the Berenstain Bears. Very little has been made for the Berenstains, by the way. There's really very little out there. Fluffy stuff. So this is just their own properties. This may be a plush toy that you had as a child, though. Some size assortment information. and then musical animals. And if I remember, these would be wind-ups. These would be wind-up toys, you know, they, so they got the music box inside. There's Casper and Curious George again. Casper looks like a character from Barba Papa. Who remembers Barba Papa, anybody? I remember all kinds of random stuff like that. Animal dress-ups. Now, a couple of those look really familiar to me. Animal dress-ups. That, that dog looks very familiar. I know I've seen that a few times. And so does that turtle. That calico turtle is really familiar to me. That just jumps out and grabs my memory here. And then over here we get some some oddballs. We got a uh, a monkey in a tennis outfit, I guess, and a cheerleader frog. And then it says Slicker Dog and Puppy Love. And Joe the Jointed Bear. Twenty-eight inches, eight and a half all the way to twenty-eight inches in size. Joe the Jointed Bear. And I guess he comes in different colors as well. That's what that implies to me. Almost Winnie the Pooh here, and then plush beanbag animal assortment. That looks like a countertop display. Flip them, flop them, or just plain love them. All right. <laughs> and then miniature plush. Now we're getting into Sesame Street. Sesame Street's still around. 
Not this Sesame Street, though. Sesame Street turned to crap after Elmo was introduced, in my opinion. Driving School. That's great. That looks like the kind of toy that you would attach to, like, a stroller to keep the kid occupied. Because this is what parents used to do back in the day before cell phones. Give the child something functional to actually play with instead of letting them stare at a screen and go brain dead. I'll get off my horse now. Play Street Play Activity Center. That's neat. Look at the big dial. Cookie Monster Clock and Bank. That's neat. I like that. And I guess you put the coin in his hand and he puts it in his mouth. That's what I'm getting from this. Turn the clock hands. And on the hour, the Cookie Monster will throw a play cookie into his mouth. A fun way to learn to tell time and save money. Oh, okay, I guess he doesn't do that. I guess he just throws a cookie in his mouth on the hour but there's this must be the slot for coins then and the play telephone you know I'm a sucker for vintage play telephones if I found this in really great shape I would get it I love figural telephones I don't have a lot of things like that I used to have some and I used to have a lot of Mattel jack-in-the-boxes and things and the only figural telephone I really have now is a vintage McDonald's one but yeah, I, I love this kind of stuff. Hell, they don't even make telephones anymore, guys. And the doll play sets, and these are these are outstanding. And my my wife has a bunch of these. LPH has a bunch of these sets. I don't remember specifically which ones per se. Like I don't think she has the motorbike play set, but it's like a rag doll with all of these plastic accessories, the camping set. These are just really cool. And they come boxed. You see the boxes pictured there. Muppet puzzle blocks and then Big Bird's mystery bank. Oh, and you can see the coins as they stack up. Because you know, you used to collect them in sets, for those of you who are too young to remember, and the bank would provide rolls, paper rollers that you could fill the coins in and then you could bundle them up and exchange them for other types of currency. Cash. Paper cash. And I don't know if they even do that anymore. Now they all use Coinstar and crap. Now I know she's got a bunch of these. The truck assortments with the little rag doll. Those are neat. And here's the Ernie and Bert's buggy. Rag dolls with a rag car with plastic wheels, and we saw something similar earlier with Mickey Mouse. And we're getting close to the end of the catalog here. We're almost done. And there is, it says, preschool Sesame Street Express motor train set, utilizing the same concept with the rag dolls, and I guess that's a wind-up train. and then beanbags assortment. I would want that whole display just like that. And look how they do Oscar. Everybody else gets five and then Oscar is two. It says five Cookie Monster, five Big Bird, and two Oscar the Grouch. Come on. I liked Oscar. And then Sesame Street talking dolls. I'm not sure if they're pull string or wind up. I think these are pull string, but don't quote me on that. It's been a while since I messed around with any of these. A lot of the Sesame Street stuff I have is like child guidance. Those are nice. I like those actually. Especially these two. Those two are cool. Talking Co Cookie Monster and Talking Oscar, 13 and 14 and a half inches. I wonder what they say. See, I want one now so I can make it talk. And then more plush assortment. And I believe this is the last page size ranging what looks like between 9 inches all the way up to 27. Is that the biggest size I'm seeing? Yeah, that's what it looks like. 27 inches. 
is the or 28 I'm sorry this is Grover over here you can't see it yet there it is Grover's 28 inches on the size chart outstanding and that's the end of the catalog ladies and gentlemen supported by great national advertising it says let's hope so you get great names great toys and great profits <laughs> okay quark anyway hope you enjoyed flipping through that taking that little stroll down memory lane with the Knickerbocker 1977 Toy Fair catalog anything in here that you had anything in here that you saw that you're like oh hey I want that that is just so cool they also had carded sets with these figures as well with a little plush doll with some kind of accessory because I know because LPH has some and they must be from a different year than this catalog see I want that phone now <laughs> Anything here jump out at you that you had or that you want? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. I hope that you did. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. Remember, I've done a bunch of these, so there is an entire playlist in our archive of Toy Fair catalog tours. I've done Gabriel, I've done Marx, I've done Mattel and Hasbro and Playmates and all sorts of catalogs. So a little something for everybody from the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. And I will do more of these in the future. Again, it's been a while since I've done one. So I just thought it would be nice if I threw one out. So if that's it, then what more can I say? But thanks for watching. And we will see you again soon.